And now the Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Well, Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. So you know how they say that you should or that, that you do learn something new every day? Well, I learned something this week. It's fair warning, it's a little nerdy, but I'm, I'm just warning ahead of time. But I learned that the Oxford English Dictionary comes out with their new words list four times a year. I didn't know that. Four times. I didn't realize that there were that many words that needed to be added to the dictionary over time. And these lists are quite long. I mean, has anyone actually looked them up? Probably not. You have better things to do with your lives. I get it. But I was listening to the radio the other day, and, and a story came on telling about these new words that have been put into the Oxford English Dictionary. And it caught my interest, so I went and looked it up. And for March 2014, the first list of the year, where the list included words like e-ticket, you know, electronic ticket, science-y, if you want to describe something that's really about science, I don't know, toilet paper, not the noun, but the verb, so I guess the act of decorating one's yard, uh, wackadoo, which is something crazy or eccentric, but maybe you have a better definition. Honky tonker, someone who likes their honky tonk. And of course, bestie. Though we're warned not to confuse bestie with BFF because those are totally different things. All right, so lots of non-words that are now officially words. But there was one word out of the 154 on that list, but there was one of those words really stood out to me as to why it was on there. And that word was do-over. Apparently the noun do-over had not made it into the dictionary before. Maybe it was there as a verb, I don't know, like the act of doing something over, but the idea of getting a do-over it wasn't there, at least officially. And that surprised me, because 
I imagine that people have been wanting do-overs for ages. I mean, how many times have you wanted a do-over? You know, thinking something like, if I only knew now what I knew then, or knew then what I knew now, how different things would be. Or the saying that hindsight's 2020, or our ever-famous, ugh, I wish I hadn't done that. Those are all cases where a do-over would really come in handy. But since do-overs are not always possible in most cases of life, I guess it hasn't been too important to get that word into the dictionary. Which is unfortunate because I think it would have been pretty helpful for us today to know that. So think about the conversation we just heard between Jesus and Nicodemus. I mean, first off, I, for one, always find the story very complicated. It might be become, because it comes from the book of John, and the writer of John is this otherworldly thinking and writing person. Or maybe it's really confusing because Nicodemus came to Jesus at night to talk to him. You know, I, I just picture this part of the story that's not there where Nicodemus is shaking Jesus and says, Are you awake? And Jesus says, Well, I am now. And, G- and Nicodemus goes on to tell Jesus that he believes Jesus is truly God. And Jesus again wonders why this guy is waking him up in the middle of the night. And so to get back at him, he tells him all these confusing lessons and teachings to really make him pay. But that's just me, okay. But I also think that we and Nicodemus could be helped to understand what Jesus was talking about in this confusing story if we could have used the word do-over. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Other translations of the Bible give us phrases as, such as uh, being born anew or being born again. And this has been a challenge for us because people have come up with really different meanings to those phrases. But ultimately, all three of those phrases born from above, born anew, born again, all three of them can't come from the same word. And all three point to the same type of rebirth in Jesus Christ. And that's what Nicodemus couldn't comprehend. He was trying to work out for himself just how this happened. You know, is this something that defied the laws of biology or or was there another way he could come up with a, a way to be reborn at this older age He just didn't get it. What Jesus was trying to convey, though, was that this isn't a literal birthing. It is instead a new way of life, a freedom of how we can now live, a gift of love that's been given to us. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. So lucky for Nicodemus and lucky for us, we have been given this new life through the water and the Spirit. Through Jesus' baptism, we are welcome to the waters of baptism so that we can join him in his resurrection. Through our baptisms, we are washed clean of sin and death and reminded that we are children of God. As we remember our baptisms, when we rise in the morning or when we approach the font and touch the waters or when we affirm or live out those promises that were made at baptism, we are given that opportunity for a do-over. Now remember, most things in life don't afford a do-over. We can't retract things we said. We can't backtrack the the paths that we followed on our life's pilgrimage. We can't undo most of what we've done. But we do have the gift of forgiveness that's been given to us. We can ask for and give forgiveness for the things that we wish we hadn't done or said. We can take our life experiences and grow from them and build on them as we continue down those roads and paths that make up our life. Our do-overs come in the form of a forgiven and redeemed and everlasting life in the kingdom of God. So this image of rebirth or being born from above or born anew or again is really helpful as we think of this new life that we get to be a part of. 
You know, birth isn't instantaneous. It takes those nine months of development to grow into who God created us to be. The labor that's involved is painful and messy. And when you were born, you weren't the one who was birthing you. You were being birthed by someone else. So when Jesus uses this idea of being reborn, what makes us think that we can do it ourselves? There's someone else in this process that takes the time and the pain and the opportunity to give birth to you and rebirth to you. And that's what God does for us. Rebirth is God's gift to give, God's work to accomplish, and it's God who labors to bring us new life. Through Jesus, who takes on the pain and the process, we are reborn and given our do-over over into this kingdom. It's a kingdom where flesh isn't what is important, but it's a kingdom where the Spirit guides and fills us. So when Jesus was trying to explain all this to Nicodemus, as we heard, he didn't have the luxury of using the word do-over. And so that's maybe why he used all this birth language, which I said is a pretty good image to use. But one word that Jesus did have available and did use in explaining all of this was love. For God so loved the world. You know, we've been given this rebirth through Christ because God loves us. Because God loves the world, the cosmos. God's love for us brings about those do-overs that would be completely impossible otherwise. Well, how can these things be, asked Nicodemus. Through water and the Spirit, says Jesus. Through a new way of living in the world. Through a new birth into this world. Through God's love for us and for the world. So Jesus' promise is that our eternal life comes from God's love. And usually we think of eternal life as something that happens when life ends, but I think we'd be better off to think of it as what happens when life begins. Our rebirth is something that is for us here and now, and God's love for us is something that is for us always. So Martin Luther, in a a statement attributed to him, I think puts this hope for us into our Lenten context. And he writes, This life is not godliness, but the process of becoming godly. Not health, but getting well. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not now what we shall be, but we are on the way. The process is not yet finished, but it is actively going on. This is not the goal, but it is the right road. At present, everything does not gleam or sparkle, but everything is being cleansed. So as you go on your ways, may you experience rebirth experience do-overs, and experience God's love, both in this Lenten season and always. Amen.